Okay. Uh, we are gonna start with the with the workshop. The, the idea is to go ahead and go uh, a bit into the details that we we see the other day. And for those that were already uh, in the last workshop, probably there are a lot of things that we already addressed. But um, but yeah, hopefully there are some new new things, or even after you review the documentation, you, you understand better some other things. The idea is to go through the, the whole core library first and try to explain the different uh, moving parts, and then in the in the sec and give you a demo of, of the how things connect together. And then in a second demo, Enrique will, will show also how, uh, some more specific uh, use cases of how to connect uh, the Aragon library to the different apps. So to start with, I would like to describe a bit uh, what is called Aragon Connect and how it works internally. And I think one of the things that we missed in the last uh, workshop was a bit more of context on uh, what's the difference between what Aragon uh, has already before built and what it, Aragon Connect provides right now. And that's the difference between the having a client-centric uh, user experience where you can probably all, all of you know that uh, this is the, the way that uh, you now uh, work with the organization, so on Aragon. And all this information is get from the blockchain through, through, through events, and every app has its own uh, reducer to, to, to create a, the reduced state of, of, the, of the organization. Uh, sorry, of the app in particular, and then uh, that information is displayed with different components. So this is uh, a really uh, nice way, but uh, it has lo a lot of, and also secure way of, of having the information because the client has some securities involved that that are uh, really interesting. But one thing that we proved uh, wrong in, in our assumptions was that most people would like to have their own uh, interface and create more a uh, custom experience for for them so um what it, what we try to achieve with with around connect is trying to have the powerful uh, of their own organization by having uh, giving you the tools to for you to build your own uh, custom experience and all that starts with creating, uh, fetching this the, the same data that we are fetching in the in the other organizations, uh, in the client through through the through the events uh, and reducing the state. But we start by by creating uh, what we call connectors, and one of those connectors are uh, built. And the first one that we build is in building the graph. So we are leveraging the, the graph uh, infrastructure to fetch this uh, data uh, really quick and have more uh, quick uh, information and feedback for, for, for you to use in the, in the front end. So the main connector that, that the library exposes is the, is the Aragon organization connector that has all the general information about, about uh, the organization, like applications, repositories, um, permissions that you can have in your organization. And you can query all of this and get the information you want. And for example, uh, you can go here and into the subgraph uh, dashboard and see all the information and, and the, the schema that you have available to, to retrieve more specific information. So. This is a, a general uh, overview of the difference between the, the two ways of interacting. And what we what one of the objectives with the, the Aragon Connect library was to uh, abstract the Web3 from the from the uh, experience and try to look more like a Web2 library and uh, at least to fetch the Aragon organization state. So yeah, with that said, um, now I, I will start demoing some of the ways to interact with with the connect library, and what we do, what we do in the what we do, what we do with the connect method that is the main component is trying to take all the pieces that uh, we we work on like the subgraph and the providers to to make it really easy for you to connect to your your organization and give you all the state that you that you need. 
So for example, here we, we have an example that is in the an example that is in, in Node.js. And what it, what it does is just calling the core library connect and it's uh, telling uh, what, what is the location that we want to interact with, the organization location. This could be a ENS address name or a address, uh, a single address of, of the organization. And then here we, we will tell them the type of connector that, that we want to interact with. And the type of connector, in, at, right now we only have the, the subgraph uh, as, a, as a connector, but as, a, as we show with the client, uh, it's, also, it's also possible to create new connectors to fetch the data from each an event and reduce it like, like we did before, or even create your own connectors for SQL uh, databases or some other use cases that you come up. And in this case, for example, you can further customize this, this graph and provide some further options of, of for example, the organization subgraph uh, URL here. So what we what we give here to the to the connect library is telling ah okay we want to ping to this connect to this uh, subgraph URL so you can totally create your own subgraph and fetch more specific information or different information that that uh, we currently support or even other networks like like was the case of XDI that was uh, built by one of the teams and then we we incorporate as a as a default as well so. Then you, the Connect library also allow you to specify a more uh, general general options here as a, and for example give a chain ID to specify the what type of network you would like to connect with and for example if you specify the chain ID for we will set up everything for you uh, to use a default provider from from meters and. Uh, to read the, the blockchain, and also we set up, we will set up as well the the main subgraph uh, in Ringkeby that, that we we have uh, available. And then you will, here you can also provide the read provider if you if you think that, for example, for you it's important that the provider is a Ethereum injected provider or a Windows yeah Windows Ethereum provider, for example, or you can even uh, specify a a more uh, custom provider uh, that you created before and just give it to the library. Even a Web3 provider is, is also supported. Um, okay, this is uh, about the method of connect that is handling all the complexity of the connectors and the provider for you and just give you a, an organization object with all the data uh, initialized and all the information that, that you need to to start working with the with the with the data. So now here we can see that um, if we go ahead and fetch the information, and we get here the organization state, and we can we can now uh, call different methods to get the information of the of the organization. And here, for example, we can get a, a specific application and uh, give it a filter to to fetch the specific uh, app, for example, finance. Or, but we can totally do also a organization like apps and just get the whole list of applications installed in the app. Or even we can also have a, a way to have permissions, a method to, supposed to have permissions as well, so you can uh, get that information. Then we also support a subscription for those events, so you can do apps equal uh, and await uh, and create a subscription for your organization. Uh, uh, sorry, on apps, for example, and you can and you will get a, a subscription that will be updated every time you install a new app, or even the same for for permissions. So now to show a bit more the specific information that the app has, you can get access here to the general information of an app. For example, where is the code address that, that it was deployed, that it was published, where is the app name of the Aragon package manager, and this is the also important, the ABI, so you can 
call ethers and create a contract to interact with. And we also have this intent that are all the descriptions of, of every method in the, in the smart contract that is going to be useful for, for uh, interacting with the, with the library, with the, sorry, with the app. Um, okay, this is, are the more important entities of the, of the, in, the, in the Connect library. And then the other thing that, uh, that is important to understand is the transactions because uh, we have a maybe complex at, at this point a way of a, of explain how the different steps that a transaction can uh, could be in the in the in the context of an Aragon organization because uh, these intents that we we name it like this are like methods that you can uh, create for a specific app but that they will uh, need some context of around the organizations to be uh, able to uh, to be executed or not depending on, on the permissions that you had set up in your in your organization and uh, here for example we are creating a transaction intent uh, this is the first step uh, that where you will uh, specify what are the action that you will want to 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 do and what we are doing here is telling, okay, we want to create a withdraw from the finance app, and these are the arguments that we we need to we we want to to use, and we are creating the first object that is the transaction intent, and once we have the transaction intent, we we can uh, go ahead and try to create a transaction path, and this transaction path is gonna be uh, depending on on the account that is gonna be trying to do it. It's gonna have the information about, about where the, if you uh, are able to do or not the, the, act, the specific intent action that uh, you are trying to accomplish with this account. So, so yeah, this is the, se the second object that is the transaction path that has that information and also has a, a description of the of the different uh, transaction in the in the path. And finally, what you will also, uh, the final step is also uh, having the transactions uh, in the past to, to sign, to then uh, use it as a, uh, to sign it. Um, and yeah, we can see here, for example, that the transaction has the information of, on the, of the descriptions and also the, the useful, useful, the usual uh, information of a transaction. And, Oh, yeah, uh, this is the, the final uh, object that you will, you will have. And one thing that I would like to also mention, because we also, um, this is what something that some of the uh, first uh, hacking, uh, first team hacking, uh, having a bit of trouble, he was creating an, an organization. And what you what you can do with the, to create a specific organization is uh, try to query a, a, the subgraph with a with a custom query because we don't we don't yet expose a way to fetch that data uh, directly into the into the connector. But for example, here what what we are doing is fetching the repo the repo information. The repo is the is the way that a new um, application or templates are. Uh, created and for example here what, what we are doing is creating this uh, GraphQL wrapper with a the graph that we have and performing a really custom query and this is something that you can uh, create for to fetch more specific data from the from the um, from the subgraph that we create so for example here what what I'm, I tell in the the subgraph is I want the the repo information where uh, the name of the of the repo is this is this one. So once we have that information, we can explore it like a like a, and get the information we want. That in this in this case, we, what we what we we will we would like to have is the a template address that was deployed and the template a, ABI. And with those two information, we can create the the iters a contract object to start a, creating a new instance of this. A, template in a specific so here for example we, we once we have the the contract uh, we can now uh, 
create a new instance calling the the method. And yeah, that was pretty much uh, it uh, for this part. And yeah, uh, we also uh, one one small thing that I uh, forgot to mention is that we also have a, a React library that is built on top of the core library that uh, give you a more um, give you more uh, facilities to work with React uh, in the context of the around Connect. And what what it does is um, it builds on top of the core library that we just saw and create this Connect component that it worked pretty much the same that that before, but for the in the React uh, syntax. And once you have the connect, this this is working like a provider for for the whole components in the in the in the tree. And if you if you can go here, we, we can also see that these other hooks that are exposed by the connect React library allow you to fetch the information for the for the specific uh, entity that you want. For example, here we will we will get the same that we were getting before, but the organization and for the apps. And once we have that information, we can start creating our, uh, giving the data to the components and do the, uh, yeah, create your own uh, custom front ends. And one one example for that is this, uh, this is for example, something customized done by the one hype team that it was uh, truly done with the, with the with the Aragon UI components, the same one that you, that we have in the client, but instead all the data was fetched from the from the Connect library, and you can totally have customized uh, way to to do uh, front ends that are totally uh, up to you what you what you would like to display. So yeah, uh, if you want to go ahead, Enrique. Sure, I'll share my screen now. Awesome, can you guys see my screen now? Awesome. Okay, so that was the first part. Thank you, Gabby, for that awesome breakdown of the kind of core library. So. A few things I would like to tell you going into the second part is that now we're going to see the different um, available connectors provided by the official library. You can write your own, and we're going to explain what a connector is, why connectors are available, and we're going to see some examples on how to use them. So the first thing to understand is that we saw the core library. The core library also builds on top of the concept of a connector, but provides them for your organization. So you can query your organization data. But for each app, you, you need a connector that you will need to actually import separately. But that's fine. We have already quite a few, uh, we have already a few connectors, and we're working on more. So the first thing to understand is what a connector actually is. And basically, a connector is just a thing, uh, a thing JavaScript layer over building a subgraph with the graph to just make it easy to plump data in to your custom front end or node app. Keep in mind that we are in a the graph context, a GraphQL context, as we still are not working with the Ethereum connector. So that means that for now, uh, every time I talk about a connector, I'm using the graph, then abstracting all the logic on top of that to take uh, data from that subgraph and fetch it to my app. That easy. So. Basically, that's what a connector is. Just a thin layer of JavaScript between the graph. That's it. Of course, we also provide utilities for you to actually make queries without having uh, to go directly to the graph. That's what makes uh, Connect beautiful, and that's where the value lies. Instead of you having to set up all this complicated GraphQL setup, which is normal, you know, you have to set a cache, you have to set up a client that can handle WebSocket uh, connections plus normal fetches in XML HTTP requests, you, we have all abstracted all of this for you, and you just need to import the library, and that's it. So um, let's see a few examples first. And I really want to go first through the voting app connector, which is 
basically the example connector if you want to build your own. But we're going to go directly to the bottom and see the actual subgraph schema. So basically, this is all the information you get when querying the voting connector. You can check this to see if you can actually build this um, yourself. Uh, and what's on the and what's on the Argon client? And it turns out you can. You have all the information you need here, and so you can see that for the entity voting, uh, you can get things such as the creator of the build, the metadata of the build, uh, the script that the vote will execute, which is really important, as we will see later, and also the casts, which means you basically get full control over the voting app, and you can also make actions over it. We have a set of methods that we can see, but I think it's better if we see an actual working example. So we're going to go to a custom uh, front-end uh, for voting that I did for this uh, DAO called Matos DAO, because we need some memes here, of course. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm listing votes here. And you can actually see that there are some votes that instead of display metadata that you will write if, it's, if it was a signal and vote, you're actually seeing the actions that are being performed on the vote. You know, for example, like this whole grants, this address, uh, the ability to perform actions of this role. This is all RAT spec. We actually built in RAT spec right into the Connect library for you to use it really easily. I'm going to show you how to do it a bit later. But of course, uh, let's jump into the code, right? That's what we are here for. So first, as you can see, this is a React app. So this is a web app. We're in the web in a web context right now, but of course, Lyra, uh, Connect can be used both in a web uh, in a web slash a mobile context and the node context as well. So you can use this for whatever you like. And so yeah, in here we have a simple React app, and as you can see, I'm only really importing two things from the Connect library. I'm importing Connect for instantiating my org and describe script, which is the magic function that will describe our functions later. And also, I important D, the graph voting connector, which is uh, our official one and the one we maintain. And also some CSS, because we're going to make things pretty. Now, as you can see, I also have some variables described here, just for some housekeeping. An empty script for uh, votes that are only for signaling and will not execute any metadata. The desired DAO address and the voting subgraph URL. You need all of these to uh, to actually make this example. So we'll jump right into the app, uh, which is this method. And you will see how the connect functionality can actually be encapsulated in just a single function. So we got some state here. This is for the latest vote. Uh, this is actually for the display here. And we also have a state for actually maintaining the votes into memory. So really simple. It's a really simple app. Now we just have a use effect that fetches the data. And so we're going to go on to the step one. I'm using the, li the core library here as well. So I'm just going to connect to the organization. And you just need to pass in, again, the DAO address, the connector type, which is the graph. Remember, we're in a graph context. If we're using the Ethereum connector, which is still a work in progress, we would pass a different thing. But here, we're using the graph. And so as I'm connecting to a Rinkv DAO, I need to pass a different chain ID. We default to one, which is mainnet. But of course, not everyone um, uh, wants to connect to mainnet. So we let you pass the chain ID that you want. Of course, we uh, support uh, Ring we support mainnet, and we support XDA as well, as Gabby said a little bit ago. So yes, after that, we, uh, you can see that we are actually initializing uh, the voting app, the voting app uh, here soon. First, we're fetching the app uh, address that we need. And of course, like I could have just copy pasted that, but I really want to show you that using only connect to do what you want is completely possible. And you don't need to do uh, things arbitrarily or manually. You can just use connect and get your job done. That's it. I'm also fetching the rest of the apps, and you'll see why later. But really, I'm just fetching information here. Nothing really crazy. So then we'll finally initialize the voting app. And that's it. We, the connector that I, um, <clears throat> that I imported just takes three methods. First, the voting app address. 
then the voting subgraph URL, and then uh, this parameter is optional. But I'm going to set it to true because this is actually variables logging. This is super useful for developers because then every time our a connector does something, it will log that into the console. And we will check it later to see what's actually happening under the hood, which is great. So now we have connected to organization. We have actually instantiated the voting um, connector. So one last thing left, just fetch the votes. It's really easy. So I just need to call voting, which is the variable that, hold, that holds the voting connector, that votes. And just like that, we're getting um, all of the votes here with that. I'm processing the votes as there are some votes without metadata. The metadata is actually what you see here. And, but what happens is that votes that perform actions need to be described by rad spec. You get the raw script, but of course, you need to actually parse it. So that's why I'm processing the votes. So here I'm just passing the votes array that I get return, and we go to this process vote function that I made here. This is just simply a function that either queries, uh, if, decides if the vote script is actually empty, then just return the vote. That's it. If not, then grab the description from the vote and return the whole thing, but add the description to the metadata. And just with that, we can actually process all the votes. Then just a little bit of housekeeping down here, and we're setting, setting it to state. That's all about uh, we do. And as you can see, most of this code, like this function is really short. Most of these things are just uh, comments and white space for readability. But using Connect for fetching votes is super easy and, super, and also super fast to do. Now, of course, I'm fetching all the votes. What's that? Uh, but what will happen if I had like a DAO with um, 100 members and we had like 300 votes? You know, we were not the new kids on the block. We just had a lot of people in, and the DAO was really active. No problem. We also have pagination in the connector. So I can just pass an object here and fetch the first three votes. As you can see, then after this loads, that's it. We have three votes only. But what happens if I actually want to implement, let's say, I'm making an app, which I can actually just scroll down and scroll down and load more votes, and I just really want to be smart about my front and implement uh, infinite scrolling, Instagram style. Sure. You can do here, skip, and I can skip the first three votes. So this will actually then skip some votes. And then, boom, uh, I skipped the first three votes and actually just got the next three votes after that. That's just normal pagination, as you know it, in any other library. Real simple. So we got that pagination going. But as you can see, everything after this is really just markup and some styling in another file. Connect functionality is really, really uh, small and self-contained, which is really great. Of course, let's also see the GraphQL wrapper. As you can see here, I just really want to make it a little bit bigger if I can. Bear with me, guys. There we go. So as you can see, this is the lock uh, from the uh, connector itself. It says the subgraph you're fetching data from, the arguments. As you can see, the, this is the app address. And then um, taking the first three votes, skipping the, th uh, the, the other three votes. And as you can see, I can also see the query that we're doing with the actual um, subgraph. So the return data is actually what we get. And, and as you can see, we get all the things that we saw in the actual um, API requirement, requirement here. So the schema tells, uh, tells us we can get all this in a vote entity. That is actually what we got here. We got the app address, the creator, if it was executed, the ID, the metadata, which is really important, and also the script. In this case, we see it has an NTIP script. But basically, for developers, we have everything here that they need to make, create a custom, fully functional voting interface. Now, I want to go to the next uh, connector, which is the tokens connector. 
as you can see, we have more methods here, but I really want to go down to the schema definition as well and see that actually the token manager has a little bit more information in terms of how it's broken up. So we have the token manager itself, which is, has the, the address and the organization address it's tied to, and the actual token address, which is through the token entity. So after that, um, we've got the Minimi token itself, which means the token that gets created for your DAO. You can fetch it, and you can see its information. If it's from Fairwall, the total supply, its name, its symbol, et cetera. We'll see how we fetch that later. And also, the token holder entity, which means we can also list token holders just like in a normal Aragon organization seen in the client. So again, if you wanted to build the whole client again, just using Aragon Connect, you can for the most part, especially the fetching data part, which is great. So I actually put on an example for here. And this is all actually in a no context, which means that this is not a browser application. And as you may remember, the Argon wrapper, the old version, works in a browser context. Meanwhile, the toolkit, which is the old version of Connect, but for known, only works in a no context. This is general, and so you can use it anywhere. No worries. So as you can see, I'm connecting to the token manager. And, it, and I also have the, the also, the token SAP address here, I did copy paste it this part to save some space and code and actually concentrate on what's really important. And also, the token manager subgraph URL. But really, connecting to the token manager is also super easy. We've got the app address and the token manager subgraph URL. And I actually put false in terms of logging here. And after we see all the output from the console, we're going to turn it to true and see what, see what it's doing. But then, of course, the first thing, I want to see the token information from the token manager. So as you can imagine, that's really easy. It's just a, an async call to the function token manager token. And of course, then we are logging the token info. If we go here in the console, I'm using code sandbox. So this is running a normal uh, container in the browser, which is really great. We are going to have all, all of these examples running in the Notion doc. So you can go and fork them and just play around with them. But as you can see, we have the token itself. And we got the, its address, its ID, which is used for uh, storing it in the graph. But we got the name and we got the symbol, which is a really interesting thing. Because we got that it's the same token. And the, symbols, the symbol is ain't. If we will go to the actual same fame organization in the client, you will see that it's actually true. And this is. Uh, the whole, um, this is all the information from the token itself. It's also non-transferable. So it's really about exclusive membership, this part, right? But cool. That is how you fetch the token information using the token manager. Now, um, what we want is actually the holders. And we want to see the information about each, each holder. So again, really easy. We just get the token we just got, and then we, we get the holders. Right. We just call that function, that's it. This is why the schema is actually a bit broken up because of how the data is stored on chain. But we are still registering that in our subgraphs and we're able to parse all this information. So for the token uh, for the token holders, we have all the information again. You see that it's a uh, written schema. We got the address, we got the balance, and we actually got uh, also the token address again, if we really want to refer to that later. But the important thing is that we got the address for, from each one of them. So let's say if I made a web application from uh, using the token manager, I could totally list the, uh, the token holders with their three bucks profile, for example. That'll be a cool integration. And yeah, we can totally do that. Of course, we can also have a ton of token holders. And so I can actually paginate this as well. I just want to get the first three token holders. So we have to fetch, uh, we, ha we have to wait this uh, to fetch again, of course. But after it's done, you will see that we will be able to actually fetch the the first three token holders. But of course, like this is a container, it may take a long time. But 
as you can see, like it's really easy using the connectors. And the cool thing is that you can build your own. First, I really want to show you an example from the guys from OneHive that Gavi also showed earlier, which in which uh, they actually have. Uh, they actually use the low-level utility we provide to make queries for a subgraph. So you see that they're using this GraphQL wrapper here. You can import it from Argon uh, Connect the graph. So then, what they do is they just instantiate it with the token manager subgraph, which is really just the URL. And then they just need to call the function, perform query, and insert the GraphQL query, of course, using the, the GraphQL tag uh, library. This is the, uh, the query they submitted. And as you can see, it's really just a GraphQL query, nothing else, nothing really complicated. And after that, um, they used to get the data, and that's it. So basically, if you don't find a connector for, uh, for the app you want, you can either just query the subgraph if it exists, or build your own connector. We're going to show how to build a, a connector yourself in a future workshop. But for now, this is it for the connectors. And then if you want to know more about all of this, we have the documentation site which is here in the URL you see uh, up here. And there you can see that the connectors that we maintain have a ton of other methods. And they also support subscriptions, as Gavi also showed on the other organization connector from the, uh, the core library, which means that I can also, for example, wait for boats to be created in a DAO, fetch them in real time and display them, and also notify the user that a new boat has been created or when a new token holder joins the club. And so basically, that's it. That's all we wanted to show you um, about the basics of Argon Connect. And now I think we can go to the questions and see if you guys have any doubts.